Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Ragnar Blackmane. If you like the channel and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now onto the video. So the first colour that we're going to use is Vallejo Black, but any black will do. I'm going to use this to paint up his hair. There's sections on the fur as well, like the central piece on his back, like the cloak. You've also got the seals in between his battle plate and also the kind of tail which is running down his left shin. Now on the fur on the back what I mean by the middle piece is you've got a kind of darker section in the middle at the top of the fur so that's the bit that you want to paint black. Now there's plenty of gold on this miniature so we're going to start on the gold with Citadel Retributor armour. You can paint all of the golden bits with Retributor armour. This will cover quite a bit of the miniature because there is a lot of gold on there. I think this is one of the colours that when you add it, it does bring it to life a little bit because there is gold on pretty much every part of the miniature. Got like the little decorations on his shins and his wrists, decorations on Frostfang, all kinds of talismans and things like that hanging from him. That done, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to use this to do the chains and the teeth on Frostfang. And any of the little silvery metallic bits that you want to paint onto it. We're going to use the Model Air Chrome to paint up that. Once finished with that, we're going to use Citadel Mephist on red. We're going to use this to paint There's a couple little sections on his top knot, a few little bits on Frostfang, the various cubic kind of gemstones which the Space Wolves are renowned for. So we give these a nice smooth coat of red, and we can move on to the next colour. Next up we have Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to use this to paint up his cloak. Now his cloak generally is, it looks a more reddy orange colour, so you could go Mephist on red, wash it with probably Caroberg Crimson to go with, then use Evil Sun Scarlet and finish off with Wild Rider Red. But for this one I'm going to go with a more crimson and sort of a deeper red colour for it because I think it goes with the armour colour better. I like the look of this kind of coloured cape with the Space Wolves. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone for his face. The only little bit of skin on the miniature itself. I'm going to give that a nice smooth layer. Now there's bags of detail on his skin that we'll come across when we're shading and highlighting that later on. So just give that a nice smooth layer. Next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Dryad Bark. And the areas where we've used black on the fur, we are going to do an area of Dryad Bark around this black area. And this will set up two of the main colours for the fur that we're going to be working on later on. So you can see where we put the black on earlier. And then we are using dryad bark around that. So it goes black to brown. And then we'll be using Rakar's flesh and shades and stuff to bring that creamy white coloured fur on the edges too. Next, a little bit of Rakar's flesh, so you can paint any bone and claws, and also the edges to the fur, which we haven't painted yet. So you can do all of the edges to the fur in this colour. Also the wolf's head as well.
like so. Next up is Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to use this just to paint all the little rune stones that are hanging from the chains and from his belt and that kind of stuff. So just give all those a nice smooth coat of Mechanicus Standard Grey. be using this to paint up the top part of the base too but depending on how you're painting up the base and what he's standing on depends on how you want to do that. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm mainly going to use this just to do the little pouch which is on his right hip. Very quick layer this one we're just going to use that and then move on to the next colour. With that done, it's now going to be a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to use this to do his pouch and the holster on his left hip. And this will be using the same leather technique that I used on one of the previous videos, which I'll link up here. Let's do some wear on that leather as we're painting it. Got a nice smooth layer of Mournfang Brown, and we can move on to the next colour. Now, I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Avaland Sunset. This is to paint the casing of Frostfang all the way up that blade. Now we've got another click layer, we're going to use Citadel Snipe Bite Leather Contrast. We're just going to use this on the little leather pouch on his hip. Like so. Now we're going to shade his cloak, or the underside of his cloak, and we're going to use Citadel Carabao Crimson Shade. So just give that a nice smooth coat of that. I'll be darker in the recesses, where it gathers a bit more. That allows to shade that cloak quite nicely when we come to paint it back up. Now we're going to use Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use this to do the gold on the miniature and also the fur up to the Dryad Bark area and around that Rakarth Flesh area too. So that it's Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to do all of the bone claws. Also, any skulls or anything like that that are knocking about. Like so. 
Next, Citadel Drucci Violet. I'm going to use this to paint all of the Mephiston red that we used, so on those angular stones, on the little bits of his top knot band. And also on the little cross piece of Frostfang 2. Like so. Next we're going to use some Citadel Null Oil. This is going to be to shade all of the silvery metallics. So you've got the chain, got sections of his power pack, also the teeth on Frostfang, and various bits of metallics here and there on the model and on the base too. Next shade is going to be Reichland Flesh Shade. This is just going to be to do his face, so a really quick layer here. Going to make sure you get enough to get into all those recesses, but not too much that it really, really darkens it and gives you some really distinct shaded areas, just enough to get that a little bit darker than it is. Next shade is Citadel Fugan Orange. Going to use this to do Frost Fang. So the way you want to do it is you want to put the majority of the Fugan orange on the bottom and then have it getting thinner and thinner towards the top end of it. You can use this like a practice run for how we're going to get that orange to yellow a little bit later on. Final shade is going to be Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade and this is going to be to do all of that baby blue for his armour. This will not only darken it down but it will give you that nice shade in the recesses, bring out all the details so you can see exactly where those details are when you come to paint it up surely. Return to the colours now, we're going to start working on his armour. So the plates are going to be coloured using Citadel Rust Grey. I want to be trying to leave the shade in the recesses and on the underside of the battle plates, so like the underside of his arms and legs, the knee pads, that kind of thing. While the areas that would be catching more light would be a more crisp and clear Rust Grey. We're now going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the mix, but whichever white you usually use will be fine, just to lighten up the rust grey. We're then going to start adding highlights and a bit more lighter colour to the armour battle plate. Finally, going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just do some nice edge highlights on those armour plates. So you want to be thinking about where the light is going to be catching the armour and where you're going to have the light catching the edges of the battle plate. This final layer on the battle plate, it really does bring out all the details, bring all that blue together. So battle plate finished, we're going to start working on the gold, which I think is one of the other major colours on the miniature. So you're going to be reapplying the Retributor armour on the sections which will be catching more light, or the wider open sections of gold too.
I'm now going to do the first highlight on the gold using Citadel Liberator Gold. And again, think about where the light's coming from and you want to be highlighting the gold in the areas that will be catching more light. Getting that nice shiny reflection on there. Finally, we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold. We're just going to do the final edge highlights on the gold. Now thinking about where the light's going to hit it and getting those areas highlighted, as well as the top edges of any of the gold sections and the patterns and details. This will really make all those gold details stand out. Now we're going to work on the cloak. We're going to start with Citadel Corn Red and reapply some of the red colour back to the underside of that cloak. If you're looking at it side on, you can see where the light catches it more than other areas. So these are the areas that you want to be reapplying the corn red to. You can see that caribou crimson in the recesses there. And then the crests and the ridges that are catching all the light. So you want to make sure you get all those crests and ridges too. Now we're going to highlight this first using Citadel Wasdaka Red. Again you want to be using this on about 50% of the area that you've just used the corn red. You want to be using it on the area that will be catching the most light. like so. Next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror and we're going to do the final highlights on the cloak with this. So you're going to be using it around all the little nicks and cuts in the cloak. You're also going to be using it on the very edge of it just to highlight those and make them really stand out. As well as that on the wider areas where you've painted about or quite a thick bit of Wasdaka Red. Like the other side of the cloak, there's quite a wide area. You'll be using a bit of pink horror to highlight that too. Now we're going to start using some Vallejo German Grey. And this is going to be to highlight the black. I went straight onto this one rather than using black because this time there wasn't actually any black to go over on any of the other little bits. So if you need to reapply any black to sort of like the hair or the bits between the armor plate then do so and then go on to the German grey from there. It's very rare that I get to go straight to the German grey but if you need to touch up the black and then go onto it or you just go straight onto it you just apply the German grey to the areas that will be catching the light. Now I'm going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to be using this to highlight and reapply colour rather to the base sections here. You're also going to reapply the colour to the rune stones that are hanging off the chain across his shin there. And also highlight the kind of wolf tail thing and his hair as well. And the little details on the shoulder pad too. Now we're going to use some Citadel Dawnstone. I'm going to apply some final highlights to this little kind of tail thing here. Also a few little highlights to his hair and the rune stones and then also the big aquila on the base as well.
I'm going to use a tiny spot of Vallejo white. This is going to be to do some tiny little highlights. To those rune stones, doing the top edges of the runes so that they'd be catching the light. And some tiny little bits of white hair, wisps on the side of his head there. And you'd also do the final highlights on the base, that quiller as well, if you're doing it the grey colour. Now we're going to move on to Warnfang Brown from Citadel. And this is the paint on the colour for the pouch and also the holster as well. So now I'm adding a little bit of Citadel Rackarth Flesh to the Mornfang Brown to lighten that up and we're going to start applying some scuffs and scrapes onto the holster and the pouch. So you want to be doing the brush strokes horizontal on the vertical sections and vertically on the horizontal sections just to give them that rough and jagged look where it's been scraped on the corners or along the edges. You can also use this to highlight the patterns on the side of the holster if you want to as well. You want to give this a nice rough look, look a little bit ragged as though it's been through the grind a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more Citadel Rackarth flesh to the previous mix and then just do exactly the same again but on a smaller scale so that you're getting slightly lighter rough edges and scuffs. Now I'm just going to use some pure Rackarth Flesh. This is going to be to reapply the colour to all the little claws and teeth which are on the miniature. There's quite a few of these, there's some on the cape. I've done the ones on his feet as well, I'm not too sure whether they were meant to be metallic or not, but I quite like the idea of them being bone claws. So the ones on his feet, and then you've got ones on his pelt also. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Ushabti bone there, and that's going to be to do the first highlights on the teeth and claws. So you want to be doing about 50% of them. If you can get any of the kind of striations on those, so going lengthways top to bottom, or not quite top to bottom should say. Uh, you get those striations on there just to give them a little bit more of that bone effect. And finally we're adding some white to the Ushabti bone and we're going to do one final highlight on the claws and the teeth. like so. Now we're going to start on the dryad bark on the fur. So we're going to start gently brushing this back onto the fur. This is a little bit like a wet brush. It's just slightly more paint than a dry brush. And you're just dragging that at a 90 degree angle to the direction of the fur on the miniature. Just over those areas that are dryad bark. And a little bit onto the area which was black initially too. I'll just start reapplying some colour. We're going to add a little bit of white to the dryad bark and just add a few little highlights here and there, dragging that gently across the fur just to give them the highlights that you want. I'm 
Next up, we're going to use some Rakarth Flesh and reapply the lighter colour to the edges of the cloak, or the first section of the cloak, I should say. Also a lot more colour to the face of the wolf, which is on his shoulder there. I'm going to add some white to the Rakarth Flesh. We are going to do some highlights on these sections. So I was painting up the wolf here, I was looking at the picture of Ragnar on the Games Workshop site. The great thing about it is you've got that 360 degree rotation of it, so you can see exactly what colours you're meant to be painting where. So just rotate it round so that you can see the fur and the sections that you're working on, which I find really quite handy. I'm going to start working on his face, so we're going to use Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. You're going to leave the right hand flesh shade in all the recesses and start painting all the raised areas with just the basic flesh tone that we used to begin with. This will start to bring the detail out and give you an idea of where you're going to be highlighting to. And also start to make the miniature look a little bit more complete because I think the face is one of the main parts that does that. So the first layer down, we're going to use some Vallejo White and mix that with the Cadian Flesh Tone to just get a slightly lighter tone. Now we're going to start highlighting the face. You want to think about where the light is catching the skin. And then gently apply that to those areas. Now he's got creases across his face, creases down his face. Lots of details on that skin. Now there's going to be some Vallejo White mixed in with the previous mix to add another highlight to that. Like so. Going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just do one final very small highlight on all those little raised areas just to bring out the final details bring that face to life a little bit the skin completed we're now going to use some vallejo white to paint the eyes So you're going to try and drag the brush away from the nose each time you paint an eye. Like so. I'm going to use a little spot of Vallejo black in each eye just to give them the kind of iris and pupil. As always, the right eye goes in really well and the left eye takes me ages to get right. I'm going to use some Citadel and Fist on red. I'm going to use this to paint the little band above and below his kind of stomach guard or his belt or whatever it is. The colours I'm using on this, if you were to paint his cloak with the other red method which I tend to use, I'd be using the same colours that I'm going to use on the trim of that belt. So you could use those colours to do his cloak if you wanted to. So the first highlight on these parts is going to be Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a nice bright orangey red. So you can use that to highlight those top parts there. The little bits on Frostfang. And then those bands on the front of his belt.
Now I'm going to highlight those with Citadel Wild Rider Red. So it's mainly edge highlights that you're going to be doing on Frostfang and on those little bands on his hairband and just the little centre bits on the trim of that belt. Now I'm going to use some Avalon Sunset to start working on Frostfang. So all we're going to do is reapply the Avalon Sunset to the majority of the blade over and around the lettering on Frostfang. So you leave the shade in the recesses and you're just reapplying the Avalon Sunset all around those because we want those letters to be crisp and clear. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow. Just going to use this to brighten up the end of that frost fang by doing this to maybe the top third that'll give you a nice highlighted section for it going around some of those letters you don't have to go all the way down on these do the same on the flip side as well now i'm going to use some citadel dawn yellow we're going to use this to do highlights on the lettering and the top edge of Frostfang. So on the lettering you want to be thinking about where the light is going to catch each of those edges and highlight them accordingly. So like on this side, the long part of the F on the Frostfang, you would be highlighting that long edge. You'd be highlighting similar edges all the way up there. Now we're going to use some Citadel Fugan Orange to get that nice yellow to orange transition going down the blade what you can do is add more fugan orange to the lower end of the blade and thin that out as it goes to the top and when i say thin it out i don't mean mixing anything with it I just mean using less and less as you get towards the middle of the blade once you've done that you'll have a rather nice looking transition I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Balor Brown on the little pouch which is on his waist there. I'm going to mix a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh with the Balor Brown. I'm just going to do a highlight on the pouch to give that a few rough edges and a little bit of wear and tear. We're now going to start working on those gems. So we're going to use Citadel and Mephist on red. I always tend to paint the top of the triangular sides with the red. So as it's coming to the tip of the gem on the top sides, you want to have that as the lighter colour. like so. Then I'm going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to that mix and highlight about 50% of the area you've just covered with this colour. Like so. I'm just now going to use some pure white just to do final highlights to those gemstones. So you'll be running along part of those ridged edges, leave a little space, and then do a little spot of white. Also do a spot of white in the darkened areas towards the back edge of those triangular shapes too.
And the final thing that we're going to do is use a tiny spot of Vallejo Black just to paint the eyes of this wolf at the back here. Now I did actually paint the eyes of the wolf with a little bit of Abeland Sunset when we were doing Frostfang, which I failed to mention. So do a little bit of Abeland Sunset on each eye, and then just do a little spot for each eye with the black. This is the finished Ragnar Blackmane. That's a cracking figure, really enjoyed painting it. And there's some really, really cool details and plenty of places to test out different ideas and techniques while you're painting them. Really, really great model. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.